Today on the Best Ever Ellison Show, we're going to talk about the atheist, communist connection to the civil rights movement. Oh yeah, we're going to talk about that today. Now I want you to like, subscribe, follow me on X, because you know they don't try to block me, but we're not going to allow it. So we're going to talk about the communists and the atheists who started the civil rights movement today on the Vince Everett Ellison Show. All right, let's get this thing started. <laughs> yeah, we're going to talk about it today. Okay, we just ended February. And everybody know that February is Black History Month. Yeah. I always thought that black history was American history, but that's a whole nother thing. But again, they decided to make February Black History Month. Now, I call it Black Liberal History Month because that's who they usually talk about, nothing but black liberals. But it's something they don't want to tell you about Black Liberal History Month. They want to talk about the Civil Rights Movement. You know, they always talk about the Edmund Pettus Bridge when they walked down that bridge, got hell beat out on that bridge. And they're going to talk about the Civil Rights Movement when you know, black folks got water cannons and dogs and beat up by the police and all that kind of stuff. You know, they're going to always talk about that to try to make America live in condemnation, make white people in America feel bad about what they did to black people. So they'll give them free stuff and tell them, you know, we shall overcome, we shall overcome, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. We heard it all before. Well, what they what they really don't tell you is that with, with all that fighting and all of that hell raising and all that marching and all that sweating, Black people still at the bottom of every socioeconomic statistic in America. Every one. When it comes to family breakdown, number one. We're at the top of everything bad, at the bottom of everything good, all right? Home ownership, bottom. Graduation rate from high school, bottom. Family development, bottom. Income, bottom. But you want to talk about addicted to dope, fighting, raising hell, going to jail, burning up stuff. We're at the top. So the question is, why are you celebrating the civil rights movement when black people at the bottom, every socioeconomic statistic in America? It's like celebrating a coach that's gone zero and 11 for 50 straight seasons. And you want to give him some type of plaque or award. And then when he died, you want to do a national holiday for him. The worst coach in the history of the world got a national holiday. Sam Johnson, University so and so, so and so, went 0 and 11 for 50 years. Let's give him a holiday. The only reason why you do that is if the coach was supposed to win 0 and 11. Got me? Oh, now you're getting it. So they are celebrating these people because black people are at the bottom of every socioeconomic statistic in America. That's where we're supposed to be. And that's what the civil rights movement did for us. Now, how did it get us there? Why, why, why are we there? Very simple. What nobody wants to tell you, and it's coming out drip by drip, little by little, piece by piece, is that the civil rights movement was started and controlled by communists and atheists. Oh! Didn't think I had the nerve to say that, did you? Well, I did. Just in case you didn't hear me, let me say it again. The civil rights movement was started and controlled by communists and atheists. What is your evidence, Ellison? I'll give it to you. Communism is bad, and it's bad for a myriad of reasons. I mean, they, you know, they kill, the communists kill tens of thousands, tens of millions in Russia. They kill tens of millions in China. They kill millions down in Cuba. Wherever they go, they kill people. But the one thing that makes communism terrible is that communism is also atheism. It is atheist. Now, I know y'all want to argue, communism make atheism. Communism is about giving everybody the same thing. Da da this, da 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 da. No, 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 no. Let me read it to you because you think I'm lying. So let me tell you what communism is. Hold on just a second. All right, I'm reading this. This is from uh, victimsofcommunism.org. It says communism, theoretically, ideologically, and historically, opposes God and all forms of religion. 
from the time of Karl Marx today to today, excuse me, from the time of Karl Marx to today, communism is based on the abolition of religion. Oh, did you hear that? From the time of Karl Marx to today, communism is based on the abolition of religion. In 1844, Marx wrote, this is what Karl Marx wrote, religion is the sigh of the oppressed. Religion is the sigh of the oppressed creature. The heart of a heartless world and the soul of soulless conditions. So communism, theoretically, ideologically, and historically, opposes God in all forms of religion. Now with that, why were communists allowed in the church-led civil rights movement, led by Martin Luther King Jr., Jesse Jackson, Al Sharpton, all of these black preachers out there just marching with a bunch of atheist communists. Let's start at the beginning. Martin Luther King Jr., they down in Montgomery, Alabama. They mad because they can't set aside white folks on the bus. The bus taking everybody to the same plot, plot, but they want to sit up front with white people and they get mad because they can't. So, Rosa Parks decides not to give up her seat. Rosa Parks was an operative, okay? She went to the Highlander Folk School, which was a communist training camp up in Montegal, Tennessee. Yeah, look up Highlander Folk School, started by three communists, Miles Norton and Dombrowski and another dude. They started the school. They're a bunch of communists, and they taught them how to start the civil rights movement and use, quote-unquote, nonviolent tactics to cause violence and start a communist revolution in America. So Rosa Parks was an operative. This was all a setup, okay? So Rosa sits there, gets kicked off, and then they start the, civil, then they start the Montgomery bus boycott. All right. After the Montgomery bus boycott, Martin Luther King Jr. led it. This guy by the name of Bayard Rustin went down there. He was a communist in his youth. And Bayard was a weird guy. He was openly gay. He had got locked up earlier in his life for having sex in a parked car with two white men. But um, he went down to check out the Montgomery bus boycott and he saw Martin Luther King Jr. And you know, Martin Luther King Jr. was magic. Guy's charismatic, smart, great speaker, and he was brave. So Bayard went and found one of his communist friends. Guy's name was Stanley Levinson. Stanley Levinson was the number one communist in America. Number one. He was hooked up with Moscow. Russia, and was a part of the common turn whose job was to push communism all over the United States of America. The weird thing was, Stanley Levinson was very, Stanley Levinson was very rich. He had made his money um, in, inside New York. He's selling cars and Wall Street. He made a lot of money. But he was also just a dead end of communist. And when he met Martin Luther King Jr., he said, this is our guy. So, Stanley Levinson had a lawyer friend by the name of Clarence Jones. Clarence Jones was also a communist, but he was a lawyer up in New York. He, Bayard Rustin, so Clarence Jones, Bayard Rustin, Stanley Levinson, put together the, South Car the, the Southern Leadership Conference. Yep, the Southern Christian Leadership Conference, the SELC. That was Martin Luther King's organization. They set it up. I know you don't believe me. Check it out. Stanley Levinson, Bayard Rustin, Clarence Jones did the paperwork to start the SCLC. Three communists. Now, why do you think they'd want to do that? Hmm. Well, they wanted somebody to run the SCLC, so they found themselves another communist. This guy's name was Jack O'Dell. Hunter Pitts Odell. Look him up. You'll find out that Jack Odell was also a communist. So I've just named you four communists that not just started SELC, but ran the SELC. You got it? Martin Luther King Jr. is a front man. Stanley Levinson raised the money, got King his book deals. He also uh, uh, um, uh, 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 edited King's books. But here's the coolest thing about Stanley Levinson. 
They'll let you know that he was the operative and let you know that he was up to no good. Stanley Levinson was Martin Luther King Jr.'s best white friend. They talked incessantly on the phone. They met all the time. There's not one picture of Martin Luther King Jr. with Stanley Levinson. If you do see one, it's one that they took by accident. I think there might be one out there when he was introducing them to a whole bunch of rich uh, Jewish people up in um, New York City. But it's none where they're standing there posing. He was always in the background. He was always hiding. Well, the FBI knew about Stanley Levinson. But they found out about Stanley a little bit too late. They had organized the march on Washington and the Kennedy brothers had put their signature on this thing. And J. Edgar Hoover came to them and said, hey, man, uh, I think we got a problem. He said, what's that? They said, well, Martin Luther King Jr. hanging out with Stanley Levinson, Bayard Rustin, Jack O'Dell. And we are affiliated with this guy now. We got to, uh, obviously, he doesn't know these guys are communists, so we got to, we got to, we got to stop this. Well, John F. Kennedy met with, uh, well, Bobby Kennedy told King to cut it out, leave these guys alone. He wouldn't do it. So John F. Kennedy grabs King and said, look, man, you got these communists in your mess. You got Stanley Levinson, you got Jack O'Dell, you got Hunter Pence, you, you got uh, 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 Bayard Rustin. These guys have got to go because they're communists. King tried to deny it, and Kennedy said, do you think I just pulled these guys' names out of a hat? I'm affiliated with you now. If you go down, I go down. Get rid of them. King said he would, but he lied. Well, J. Edgar Hoover heard about this group of communists meeting at Dorchester, Georgia. He set up some cameras to see who was going to show up. And lo and behold, Martin Luther King Jr. shows up with this nest of spies. He brought the pictures back to Bobby Kennedy and said, I thought he was going to cut these people loose. Bobby Kennedy saw the king had lied to him. And that's when they put the wiretaps on him and found out about his orgies and his, his, his quote unquote unnatural sex acts, which was FBI talk for homosexuality and all this kind of stuff. We found out about his drunkenness and all this kind of stuff. Oh, yeah. Now, let's get back to the communism. Why would Martin Luther King Jr., a black minister, be affiliated with a political group that if they won, would insist that God be taken out of the public square or taken out of America completely. Why? Well, let's look at King's teachings. Clarence Jones, the communist, Stanley Levinson, the communist, both admit they wrote the I Have a Dream speech. Bayard Rustin organized the March on Washington. Matter of fact, they got a Netflix movie about it. Yeah, they all organized it. A bunch of communists. A bunch of people that don't believe in God. So what is the civil rights movement about, y'all? Is it about us going out there depending on God? for what we get. What does our Bible say? I was young, but now I'm old, but I've never seen a righteous forsaken, nor a seed bag bread. What does our Bible say? I don't care what you do, but for, you, but for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Huh? What does the Bible tell us to do? Depend on our God for what we need, for he cares for us. Is that what King taught us? No. What does our Bible tell us? Our Bible tells us that we're free. It tells us that God set us free. That our freedom is an unalienable right from him. It's irrevocable, non-transferable, and unsellable. Did Martin Luther King tell us that? No. He told us 100 years after the Emancipation Proclamation, the Negro is still not free. He said, on some certain day, we'll be free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty, we'll be free at last. Tell us that we're not free. 
Am I lying? At the end of his life, he was organizing the Poor People's March to go and beg the government for $30 billion. The government was taking up only $140 billion at that time. He wanted $30 billion for free housing, free medical care, free stuff from the government. He wasn't telling black people to turn to God. He was telling black people to turn to government. And guess where we are now, y'all? At the bottom of every socioeconomic statistic in America. He turned us over to a government educational system that told us we couldn't pray in school. Yeah! They told us we couldn't pray in school in 1962, and yet they were still trying to integrate into that system. And now look at, what, at the public educational system. 85% of the children are not proficient in reading or math. The discipline is gone. Why? Because God is not going to run behind you. If you tell him he's not welcome here, he's going to leave. What did he tell his disciples? If you go into a village and they reject you, shake the dust off your feet. He said, I stand at the door and I knock. If you do not open, I will not enter. The civil rights movement was based on one sentence. To hell with God, we want government. And the saddest thing about it is that it was church-led. A bunch of ignorant, stupid, sell-out black preachers. So King tried to go inside of the National Baptist Convention and take it over for the Civil Rights Movement. And this was when the black church was a real black church. And they said no. So he tried to take it over down in, in Kansas City in 1961. Got to fighting on the floor of the church, killed a black preacher on the floor, and they excommunicated King from the black church. Yeah, he was excommunicated from the National Baptist Convention. So whenever somebody tells you that King was a Baptist minister, you say, no, he was not. He was excommunicated from the Baptist church. King started his own denomination. It was called the National Progressive Baptist Convention. See, he was slick. He tried to make you still think he was a Baptist by putting Baptist Convention in there and just putting progressive in front of it. But no. It's an apostate religion that our senator from Georgia, Raphael Warnock, belongs to. Bunch of weirdos, perverts, running around here always talking about uh, abortion and LGBTQ and let's march and take stuff from the government and beg people to take care of us. Yeah, that's that's King's click. Yeah, march. No justice, no peace. I want my reparations. Now, what does the Christian faith teach you? For forbearance? Forgiveness. Love one another. Jesus said, my last commandment to you was for you to love one another. It teaches us to not have envy. No strife. No confusion. That's the Christian religion. No coercion. If I can't change your heart, if I can't, if I can't convince you to give it to me freely, I don't want it. Even when it comes down to our, our tithes and offerings, our Bible tells us that Jesus loves a cheerful giver. No coercion. If I have to make you give it to me, I don't want it. Oh, was that the civil rights movement? No, we're going to burn down everything. We're going to march. We're going to aggravate you. We're going to put a gun in your head. You're going to give me what I want. And look at what it's gotten us. At the bottom of every socioeconomic statistic in America. But you know, the white liberals love King. I mean, who wouldn't like a guy who walks up to you and says, I want to be like you? I desire to be near you. Being with you makes me a better person. I'm at my best when I'm in your presence. Please let me around you. He reaffirmed everything that white racist liberal Democrats thought about us and the worst things that black people thought about themselves. He told the black community we were inferior when God told us nobody is superior to you. You're an heir of Jesus Christ. You're a child of God. 
He told us to dream about a day. Dream about a day that we'll be accepted by these people. And God told us what? You're not, be, you're not supposed to be concerned at all about what mankind thinks about you. You're supposed to be more concerned about what I think about you, what God thinks, and what you think about yourself. Running around being concerned about what man thinks about you, especially racists? How's it working out for you? Not fixing up your own neighborhood. You want to move out and move into somebody else's before you fix up your own self. What did Jesus tell us about that? Don't be worried about the splinter in your neighbor's eye. Be worried about the beam in your own. But we want to call them racist. Yeah, we want to call them out their name. We want to run at them and talk about how bad they are when you look at yourself and you're 10 times worse. You won't take care of your own neighborhoods. You won't take care of your own children. You won't educate yourself. But you're always pointing the finger. America's racist. Racist white people. Racist white. No, no, no. What about you? I can see why white America looks around and say, I know y'all ain't trying to talk. Going to every ghetto and it looked like you just walked into a bombed out African country or, 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 or you're in Haiti somewhere. And they got the nerve to try to talk about somebody. All courtesy of the civil rights movement. But that's why they love him. But this is the number one reason why they love them and they want to keep on pressing this civil rights movement as this great movement in American history. 90% of black people have been voting for the Democrat Party for the last 160 years. Yeah, all the way back to the election of 1876. Go check it. The whole South went Democrat and black men were voting and black men voted for the Democratic Party all the way back then. But get that big switch stuff in 1960. We have never not voted for the Democrat Party, okay? And as long as you keep doing that, they're going to keep on pushing this mess that we are the ones that can protect you. You can't make it in America. Oof, Malcolm X asked the question, who taught you to hate yourself? From the top of your head to the bottom of your feet. It was the black Democrat, the Iron Triangle. The black preacher, the black politician, and the black civil rights worker. He's the one. It was Martin Luther King Jr. that said uh, he was dreaming about a day that he wouldn't be judged by the color of his skin. But by the content of his character. Let me make something plain to y'all right now. You will be judged by the content of your character. It's inescapable. If you ain't getting hired on a job right now, it's not because of the color of your skin. It's probably a myriad of other things. You can't read, you can't write, you won't come in on time, you walk into the job looking slouchy, not dressed properly, uh, can't hold a conversation. These are things that you can change and you can better. Color of your skin, you can't change. How do I know? You can't get too much blacker than me. And I don't have any problems in America, nor anyone in my family. So don't fall for that lie, okay? It was Martin Luther King Jr. and his crew that says, they ask you to pull yourself up by your bootstraps. How are you going to pull yourself up by your bootstraps when you're bootless? And said, Jesus Christ says you're more than a conqueror. They're the ones talking about white privilege, white privilege. You've heard me say it before. I'll say it again. It is a privilege to be white, but it's also a privilege to be black. It's a privilege to be an American. But it's also a great privilege to be a Christian. Yeah, they're the ones walking around and talking about America's a racist country. You can't make it no matter how hard you try. The stack, the deck is stacked against you. White privilege, uh, uh, systemic racism. Well, if it is systemic racism, it's because of the Democrats, well, they control all the systems in the black community. So folks say, well, Vince, why don't you ever talk about the Republicans? Because Republicans don't run anything in the black community. Name me one majority black district that the Republican Party has any control in. Any majority black city where they have any control. Any. Republicans running Detroit? No. Memphis? No. Chicago? No. New York? No. Philadelphia? No. 
L.A., no. New Orleans, no. Yet you want to holler about Republicans, why? That's like trying to blame the Labor Party in Great Britain for what's going on inside the black community. They don't have any power. It's like trying to go to China or North Korea and blame their leaders for what's going on in the black community. They have no power in it, y'all. The Democratic Party controls the black community, and they have driven it into the ground, and they've driven it into the ground because now they are an atheist and a communist party, just like the Civil Rights Movement. And they took the, and the people of the Civil Rights Movement took over the Democratic Party in 1972. So here we are. I've proven to you that the, that the Civil Rights Movement was controlled and started by atheists, Communists. I named the name, baby. Look them all up. You got your iPhone. Just, just don't use it just for booty shaking videos. Now, take it. Look up the names I gave you. You will find all of it's true. Yeah, yo, your hero Martin Luther King Jr. was controlled by a cabal of communists. And the FBI reports say that he, he admitted to being a communist. That's another story for another day. But he knew Stanley Levinson was a communist. He knew Bayard Rustin was a communist. He knew that Jack O'Dell and Clarence Jones were communists. He knew all of them were communists. He knew that, that Jack O'Dell was the executive director of the CLC. He, was, he knew it all. Wasn't trying to baptize these men and change them and bring them into Christianity. Now you ask the question of yourself, why would King align himself with such people? Why would the civil rights movement allow itself to be controlled by such people? And why now, when we try to warn you about it and tell you about it, your job is to say, uh, I don't want to believe it. I don't, why won't you believe it? You have to bother everything. What do they try to do? They try to take your, 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 your right to keep your arms away so you can't defend yourself against the government. Yes, yeah, communism. They try to destroy religion. Why? Because they don't compete for power. In America, we can always say, no, our rights come from God. Our Bill of Rights say these are rights that you cannot touch government. And if you try to touch them, we'll kill you. Yes, that's what the Bill of Rights are. Bill of Rights are rights that government cannot touch. They come from God. Communism will not allow that because all the rights come from government as far as they're concerned. Do you understand? Yes, communism wants to control the, the family. They want to make children snitches to tell the government on their family and only make the parent a conduit between them and government. Public education and everything. They want to control the minds of your children and that's where all this transgenderism, all this sexual grooming is coming from. They want to make your children their sex slaves or they want to make you their lap dogs. And it's working. That's why you better get your children out of public education right now. So I know a lot of poor folks out there saying, wait, communism is all right. Because what communism is going to do is going to take away from the rich folk and going to give it to me. Well, don't your Christian religion say thou shalt not covet anything of your neighbor? Mm-hmm. You see why Christianity has to go? Because Christianity and communism are incompatible. Then why was the black church, the Christian black church, tied up with communists because they were liars, they were hypocrites. They were front to God. Now the question becomes, what are you going to do about it? People, your white neighbor is not your problem. Not your white conservative neighbor. Maybe your white Democrat liberal neighbor is. Your white conservative neighbor is just like you. He believes in Jesus Christ. He wants to raise his children. He wants to send them to school. Their primary goal is to make sure that we, as black and white Christians, stay separated. Jesus' last prayer before he went to the cross was for a prayer of unity, that we all come together. Because if we ever come together, if black and white Christians ever come together, the Democratic Party and the left are defeated. If we ever start talking, if we ever sit down and just reason together, that's why he demanded that we love one another. It wasn't a request. We love one another. We forgive one another. Stop going over the past talking about the, 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 the Civil War, the Confederacy. 
we show forbearance to one another. Whether you want to argue about reparations or not, forget it. Go forward. As a nation, these are the things that keep us from coming together and protecting our children and our country. We are one blood. We are one people. We are heirs of Jesus Christ. We are sons and daughters of God. And the left is that serpent speaking in our ear. They went into the civil rights movement, found a bunch of jack leg, no good, lying, greedy preachers. And they've led the black community into hell and had us separate from our white brothers and sisters in Christ. We are going to repair that. That's why I'm here. I'm going to tell you how the devil is doing it so you can look out for him. So the civil rights movement, the teachings and all of the crap that came from it is of no effect. Look at our people. Look at the condition of the black community. And tell me, how can you say that was a great movement? They know it. But as long as you vote 90% for the Democratic Party, ha, they ain't going to change a thing. So I want you to go to my website, VinceEllison.com. That's VinceEllison.com. I want you to check out my documentary, Will You Go to Hell From Me? It talks about all of these things. It talks about how the civil rights movement was led by a bunch of atheist communists and why it's not born the fruit that it was supposed to. Except for one thing, getting black people to vote for the Communist Party, which is now the Democrat Party. Get my first book, Iron Triangle. Again, Book Authority gave it number 61 on, on the best political books ever written in the history of the world. It breaks it all down for you. Then, get 25 lives. Sold tens of thousands of copies all over the world. My books, all of them are made number one. All of them. They've changed politics all over the world. And Crime Inc., my latest book, came out this past October. It talks about the Democratic Party is like a crime family. I want to give a shout out to the people at World, World, World Overcomers Church in Memphis, Tennessee. It was a great event. The pastor there is awesome. The people in Memphis are awesome. And the people at the University of Iowa this past week, we had a great time. I'm going to Chicago this week, y'all, and I'm going to give a good word there. I am here to wake you up. Hope I did you some good today. So you make sure that you stay looking out for me. Because whenever I bring it, I'm going to bring the heat. So join me next week for the Vince Everett Ellison Show.